Hello, my name's Tom. Welcome to Ear Training. This is my new video series designed to help improve your recognition of intervals, scales and chords. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to start off slow and look at the intervals between the minor second and the perfect fifth. So when I'm talking about intervals, I basically mean two separate notes and, and the interval is the distance between them in a musical sense. So the minor second is the smallest interval we can we can encounter and it's most famously used or at least I, I can think of it best being used as the, the theme for Jaws, that famous it is a minor second. I don't think I'm in, infringing any copyright there. Um, and that's basically just the movement of one fret um, or one semitone. It's best to think, think of these things in tones and semitones rather than placement on the fingerboard. So that should be easy to recognize because you literally can't get any smaller notes than that. But just keep working on that. If you can't pick that out, then start um, start playing uh, any note and then just move it up a fret and just get used to that sound of, of a semitone movement. So moving up from the minor second, we've got the major second, which is a distance of a tone or two frets. And the way I think of this is my ear hears a scale continue, either a major or a minor scale, whenever I play or hear um, a major second. So a major second sounds like this. And if I let it continue in my head, I hear... So either a major or... minor scale. That's how my brain works it out. But again, it's a distance of two frets or one tone. So try and play that in different positions on the guitar until your ear gets comfortable with it. The next interval is the minor third, and this one should be the easiest to remember for any rock players, I should think, um, because there's plenty of rock songs that use this, uh, plenty of very famous rock songs that do. For example, Smoke on the Water um, is one of the first songs I learned, and that starts with this minor third interval, which is a distance of three frets or a tone and a semitone, a tone and a half. So when you hear that, you know, your brain might hear, know continue on with that riff um, yeah so that's the minor third moving up from the minor third we've got the major third and again similar to the scale one when I hear this this is a distance of two tones by the way when I hear this I hear an arpeggio and that's how my brain recognizes that it's a major third um, just keep playing this um, all over the neck to get comfortable with it. I've had sort of scales and arpeggios drilled into my head since I was much younger, so I'm sort of used to that sound. If you're fairly new to music theory, you might not have. So it's it's a distance of two tones, or you would move up one, two, three, four frets. The next interval is a fourth, um, which is quite handy for guitar players because that's how the guitar's tuned, at least on the lower string. So the distance between the E and A string is a fourth, as is the distance between the D and G and also the B and E string, and also the A and D as well. Um, the way I remember this one is because, um, well, here's, here's the interval fretted, first of all. So it's exactly the same as the open strings. Um, the way I remember it is that there was a TV show in the UK called um, Jonathan Creek, and the uh, introduction, or sorry, the title music was taken from a, a classical piece that I fail to remember now, that started exactly with that interval, and it continued like that, but it started off with that perfect fourth there. Um, so that's how I remember it. Just remember that it's it's two open strings to any of the two thick bass strings, like the A and D string, or if you bar, just low strings in standard tuning, then that's a fourth. So try and get your ear used to that and see if you can you can pick out something that will help you recognize it. The next one I find the easiest to remember, apart from the octave, because um, it's just so distinct. It's the sharp four or flat five. Um, it's got two different names, depending on what context you're using it in, but it sounds exactly the same um, on its own. And that sounds like this. Now, the best way to play this as a guitar player would be to play any fretted note on the E or A string and then play your power chord, but lower the top note down a fret. 
you get this interval used a lot in in heavy metal music but all kinds really i hear it because i've worked with a scale called the lydia mode which uses it a lot and it's very very distinct when you when you've heard it a few times it's just really tense so the second i hear that i can i'm able to pick that out and the last interval we'll be looking at today is the perfect fifth and um, which sounds like this which is um, how we construct our power chords for guitar players. Um, Melody-wise, I, I would think of the Superman theme for that interval at the start. And this one's fairly easy to, to pick out, but it is quite, quite easy starting off to get it confused with the perfect fourth. Because they're both very strong um, intervals, but yeah, so Superman theme is probably the best thing I can advise for that. So now we've gone over these basic intervals, the minor second to the perfect fifth. What I'm going to do now is shut off the camera and we'll cut to black screen and I'm going to play uh, 20 different examples uh, and they're all going to be within, uh, they're all going to be either minor second or perfect fifth. Um, there'll be like a number on screen. So grab a pen and paper or just make a note of this somewhere and try and do your best to work out what these intervals are. I'm going to put the results, uh, so the answers in the in the description box, but obviously don't. I mean, cheating in this situation is, is fairly useless because this is an exercise to hopefully help develop your, your ears. Um, and do your best to try and pick these out. If you... Um, complete the task and get a few wrong, then go back and try and re-listen to to the ones that you made a mistake on and try and identify, hopefully it should stand out when you when you know the answer, having previously got it wrong, it should stand out to you um, that you know it was an obvious mistake. And if you need to rewind to the start of, uh, of my description, if, if they helped, I mean, it's very, it's down to you how, how your ear remembers things. There might be songs that you've heard of that I will not have heard of that use these intervals at the start that you'll be able to go, oh, well, that's just that. So, so it, it requires a lot of a lot of practice, and um, I'll tr be trying to upload a few more just um, videos of this quiz, basically. So a different twenty intervals within that restriction. For each example, you'll hear both notes of the interval separately and then together you'll hear each example twice. Example one. Example two. Example three. Example four. Example five. Example six. Example seven. Example eight. Example nine. Example 10. Example 11. Example 12.
example 13. Example 14. Example 15. Example 16. Example 17. Example 18. Example 19. Example 20. Okay, I hope this has proved useful to some people. Um, if you have um, got some use out of this video, please rate and subscribe and, and let me know. Next lesson, I'm going to be adding a few more intervals to this, um, or we'll be looking at a few more, moving all the way up to the octave, and there'll be a similar quiz next time. So please subscribe, and thanks for watching.